today's Mass is offered for the deceased members of the Odak and Fowler families. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in distress. Deliver me from the hands of my enemies and those who pursue me. O Lord, let me never be put to shame, for I call on you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who in this season give your church the grace to imitate devoutly the Blessed Virgin Mary in contemplating the passion of Christ, grant, we pray, through her intercession, that we may cling more firmly each day to your only begotten Son and come at last to the fullness of his grace, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who were my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble, they will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them. For to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, For he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I'm safe from my enemies. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The breakers of death surged round about me. 
The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the nether world enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon, upon the Lord and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews picked up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, we are not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy. You, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, You are gods. If it calls them gods to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me, and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true, and many there began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus says in today's Gospel, If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me, and I in the Father. One of the motives of credibility for believing in Christ as the divine Son of God, is his miracles. That is to say, in his works, which are works that can only be attributed to God. We see all throughout the Gospel how Jesus not only claims to be the Son of God, but acts as God, shown in his authority and power in his authority and power to forgive sins, to heal the sick, the blind, the crippled, and the lame, to exercise demons, to command the wind and the sea, the natural elements, to change water into wine, to multiply a few fish and loaves, to feed a whole multitude of people to raise back to life people who have already died, to have risen from the dead himself and ascended into heaven, yet never taking credit 
for any of these good works, calling it his Father's work, while never seeking his own glory or fame from them. In our most recent gospel readings, Christ has been claiming to be the Son of God and from the Father. This is precisely why some of the Jews wanted to kill Jesus. They couldn't believe what they considered to be an outrageous blasphemy. But Jesus says to them, If you don't believe me, at least believe the works. Because, my brothers and sisters, the works will confirm who Jesus says he is. That he is from God, from his Father in heaven. And that's why, my friends, we don't follow just anyone. That's why we don't follow Buddha or Confucius or Muhammad or any other person. We follow Jesus Christ because he is a divine person, the Son of God, God incarnate, the Word of God, truth itself. Thus everything Christ taught, did, and established must be true because God would never deceive us. No wonder why so many have given their entire lives for Christ and shed their blood for the faith and for the sake of the gospel. That's why Jesus is not only worth living for, but also worth dying for. May we continue to follow Christ into Holy Week, to continue to carry our crosses after him, to enter into his passion and death with him, so as to rise gloriously with him in his blessed resurrection to eternal glory. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, O merciful God, that we may be worthy to serve ever fittingly at your altars and there to be saved by constant participation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Abao, Plenis Uncelli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray 
that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the cross, so that dead to sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds we have been healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. 
since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the unfailing protection of the sacrifice we have received never leave us, O Lord, and may it always drive far from us all that would do harm to us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder before the final blessing and dismissal that there are our stations of the cross tonight, so please stay for that. And um, I unfortunately am leading that, so I won't be available to hear confessions as I normally do. So have a good weekend, everyone. God bless you. The Lord be with you. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servants who seek the grace of your protection may be free from every evil, and serve you in peace of mind, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.
pardon and forgive you, and permit me to accompany you on this journey. You go to die for my own. I want my beloved Redeemer to die for my own. My Jesus, I will live and die always to die with you. Jesus as he walked this road with the cross on his shoulders, thinking of us and offering to his Father in our behalf the death he was about to suffer. several times under the heavy cross. My God, Consider how the son met his mother on his way to Calvary. Jesus and Mary gazed at each other, and their looks became as so many arrows to wound those hearts which loved each other so tenderly.
Consider how he and very Jesus was. At each step, he was at the point of expiring. Fearing that he would die on the way, when they wished him to die the infamous death of the cross, they forced Simon and Cyrene to help carry the cross after our Lord. Consider the compassion of the Holy One, Brahma, seeing Jesus in such distress, his face bathed in sweat and blood. She presented him with her bed. Jesus wiped his face and left upon the cloth the image of his sacred power.
Consider how Jesus Christ fell from the third time. He was extremely weak, and the cruelty of his executioners was excessive. They tried to hasten his death, though he hardly had strength to move. stretched out his arms and offered to his eternal power the sacrifice of his life for our salvation. They now his hands and feet, and then raising the cross, left him to die.
Consider how after our Lord had died, he was taken down from the cross by two of his disciples, Joseph and Nicodemus, and placed in the arms of his afflicted mother. She received him with unutterable tenderness and pressed him close to her bosom. Consider how the disciples carried the body of Jesus to its burial, while his holy mother went with them and arranged it in the sepulchre with her own hands. They then closed the tomb and all departed. They have no problem. 